making salad rolls and this one the Texas salad roll I will show you how to make that one and James is having a shrimp salad roll and he has I like when uh, we went on the picnic I put them in bags and that one is a blueberry blackberry balsamic wrap and that's what that looks like on the plate and I'm gonna wrap up this Texas one here and I uh, I kind of cheated a little bit I got impatient I didn't want to make more sauce I ran out of sauce so I just put the salsa on it okay so um, I'm gonna talk about the African Queen which was awesome it's on the top of the stack and then pig is next Queens of mystery and it went down from there and yeah volume 3 of Philip Marlowe private eye was better than volume 1 but still wasn't great and I will talk about all of those things in a moment. So, um, oh, I have my, my stuff on the wrong side because I wanted to sit over here. So I'm just going to shuffle this over and I'll show you how to wrap this up. So um, you might get salad roll wrappers, the rice paper wrappers, and, and you're thinking, well, what in the world do I do with this? How do I, because it comes dry. It comes in a, in a package and they're just dried sheets. And you're like, well, I know it has to roll and it's sure not going to roll while it's dry. Well, you have to wet it. But you don't wet it for long because um, if you let it wet for more than maybe half a minute or something, then the wrap will be too moist to roll and hold together. Because you want people to be able to pick that wrap up and and eat it and it not fall apart, right? So it's not falling apart so far. Yeah. So this is the shrimp. James gonna try uh, the shrimp one salad, first. Uh, it's is a that little what more it? traditional, but I still I made it a little bit different. I'll put my recipes on um, the notes for this video, so you can make it at home. And I'll put the recipe for the real dressing for the. Uh, Tex-Mex one too. Um, so yeah, I just you want to. I showed you the 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 vegetables. You you want to make your roll really attractive. That's the whole point. This um, you want to like the rice paper wrap. It's translucent, so you can see what you're going to be biting into, and so you want to make it look really beautiful. And um, you so line up your your vegetables nicely so that you can see them. it looks really good and if you're OCD well that's wonderful it works out it's a really great recipe for you to make you will love making uh, making wraps because it will look so perfect so you take the sides and you wrap them in first so you pick them up and this has been sitting a little while because I was getting ready for the video so it's a little tougher but um, you pull the sides over first and you got to since it was sitting, it's kind of stuck to the plate a little bit, the wrap, but I'll get it up there. See, it was kind of coming up. It's being... And, um, oh, and your stems, you want to try to face them inside or cut them off where, so, because they might poke through the wrap. I forgot to mention that too. Very important. You don't want to poke them through the wrap. So, cut that over. And then you hold it tight, tuck it in, and do and that's it it's just that easy so it's uh, it seems a little more uh, difficult to make than a burrito but it's really not it's really easy to make so uh, let's see how this Texas one tastes without the, the proper dressing because I, I would have made the proper dressing but I I ran out when I was making his and then I didn't want to make too much dressing and have lots left over so um, I only made a little bit and I made for him and a gift for somebody else and uh, so they're going to get a, a salad roll sampler and um, then I was like oh I'll just make this so really it shouldn't have sauce but we'll see if it tastes good go for it it actually tastes pretty good with sauce <laughs> I don't know it's, been, it's worth making my dressing for it, but see what you think. So beautiful. It's like eating art. 
Ja. Mm. So this shrimp one was excellent. What it sort is. of uh, dressing did you use? Pad Thai. But when I rolled up his shrimp one, another tip for salad roll making is the roll, the end that you start rolling, that's probably going to overlap with the end stuff, or at least it should to hold together well. So at the end of the roll. So you're going to have two layers of rice paper there. So it's not going to be as translucent. So you want to put your fancy stuff like the shrimp at the middle of the wrap so that it's just one layer and you can see it through really nicely. But, um, so here you got the tomatoes. Yes, and you can see them really well. Whereas the avocado, it's like, well, what is that really? Yeah, that's right. But it's still a nice color. Yeah. But you want to see the details of whatever. Like with shrimp, they have the little lines on them and stuff. And you want to put the outside. If you butterfly your shrimp, usually they do, so that it looks like there's more in there. Uh, you put the outside on the outside because it looks pretty good. Yeah, I was the one who de shelled the shrimp. I yeah, didn't know how did. to butterfly them, so. No, I had to. Pauline did a good job with it. But um, um, anyway, so the African Queen. I'm going to take my stack over here. And honestly, I did not know what to expect from this. I didn't really expect it to be great, and it was awesome. There's beautiful scenery of Africa. And well, you have Humphrey Bogart. Catherine Hepburn, two great actors that are basically, it's just them in the movie. There's there's some other people, but not, not to that many, right? And when I first thought, saw this, I thought, oh gosh, is this going to be politically incorrect or whatever? Are they saying that Catherine Hepburn is the African queen? No. It's, um, it's a great movie. It's timeless. Everyone will like, like it. Watch this movie. It's so good. And Pig is, um, it's a Nic Nicolas Cage movie. And honestly, isn't he in every second movie? I, I know that um, people like in the movie industry, they think they can work with Nicolas Cage. And this one says that um, somewhere on it, the best work Nicolas Cage has ever done. I don't think so. Um, which was the one, Raising Arizona? That was the first one I saw him in, and aw awesome. He did great. And since then, like for a long time, I'd watch him think, give me another Raising Arizona or whatever, right? And no, no, it hasn't come. So, um, like other people, I think you'd mentioned to me, you thought that they used him in the movies because as a Jimmy Stewart kind of replacement. Did you so. see that? Yeah. And he has a similar sounding sort of voice, and he is tall and gaggly, um, but he's no Jimmy Stewart. He doesn't have the chops. And he hasn't learned them. He's been hmm. doing so many movies, it's like, um, he must be good at uh, memorizing his lines, because he's in so many movies, but unless they give him a teleprompter or something so that he can just rattle things off, I'm not sure. But um, this movie, it's near the top of the stack, and I loved watching it. I, the best actor in this movie was the pig. She did an amazing job. I don't know if it was a she or a he. Um, it's supposed to be a she. But what a wonderful pig. When it doesn't take long, like I'm not going to give away the story, but um, your heart breaks. I cried. I cried when I watched this movie and it's a Nicolas Cage movie and it sure wasn't because of him and they have this like stupid fight club kind of thing in the middle and it's like where did why would that even be in there but still when you see him making the food like here he is in this um, shack in the wilderness and you see him making his food you know there he's the pig's a trouble pig, right so they, they go out wandering and he just looks like a hobo and living in the shack in the woods with his pig. And he's has the skillet and he makes food and he eats some and he puts the skillet down for his pig to eat some. And so it's, you know, it's really loving. You can see 
He loves this pig. He makes, and then later on, when you learn more, you're like, wow, he really loves this pig. And um, it's beautiful. So definitely watch pig. Queens of Mystery. Now it's, uh, I enjoyed it. And I will watch it again, like the, if they come up with more and more seasons, I think, why not? It's good. It's a winner. You have three very different sisters with very different personalities that are her aunt. So she's the detective and she has, um, she's been raised by these women who are mystery sort of solvers, right? And they write books and stuff like that. And one of them owns a bookstore and it's an awesome bookstore. It's called Mystery Inc., which is the best title for a bookstore, best name. And um, she has a book that when the store is open, the book is open and it says open across the pages. And then when it's closed, it, the cover is closed and it says closed. It's so great. It's so perfect. So um, a million women who would want to have a bookstore <laughs> watch this and go, oh yes, it's so great. Um, I totally w identify with that, right? And um, anyway, and there's a lot of the um, uh, narration that you're like, well, that doesn't sound quite right or whatever, but honestly, it's it's entertaining. I, I wanted to stop this movie every time I had to get up to do whatever, because it's worth watching. Now, we get to the not worth watching part of the program. Grandal, another Nicolas Cage movie, not that good. But honestly, when I see Nicolas Cage now, I expect, mm, not that good. Philip Mar Marlowe, Private Eye. Now, this reminded me of, I listen to, I have a bunch of audio um, books of radio plays, uh, of detective sort of stuff, from the 40s, at, which are awesome. And um, I hope I didn't give them away to somebody because I'd like to listen to them again and again. But anyway, these reminded, the Philip Marlowe stories reminded me of those, but the guy who plays Philip Marlowe, he doesn't really have the chops, and the, um, I don't know if it's the director's fault or what, but they have scenes where, like, um, a guy with a gun comes in to take a, a woman away, and um, and she's doing the, oh, thing, whatever, and that's great, but um, the guy with the gun, he shoots one guy, it takes a woman, and he's like backing away with the woman, he doesn't shoot Philip Marlowe, Private Eye. Why? Why would you not shoot him? Like, so they, anyway, somebody punches him, but, I mean, you already committed homicide <laughs> to get this woman. What's, why aren't you shooting Philip Marlowe? But anyway, so it's, there's a lot of things that, um, it's, it's really not great to watch, uh, but if you listen to it, like I listened to it while I was rolling salad rolls and stuff. Well, wow, that's taken me a lot of hours to get all this stuff ready, and and I listened to it like radio plays, and it worked out okay. When I tried to watch it, oh, terrible. But anyway, come play. These I went through some horror sort of stuff at the end, and honestly, there's a lot of good um, thriller sort of movies out there. These aren't them. Um, this one has an autistic kid, and it's Honestly, it takes a lot of patience um, for people to parent autistic children, I think. That's yours, by the way. That's the balsamic vinegar one. I, and um, it takes too much patience to watch them on TV. And I know that sounds horrible and totally politically incorrect. And this kid looked like a really cute little kid and everything. And um, at, by the end, I was like, oh, I love this kid. But honestly, I don't know how many people would get to the end because they'd be like, oh boy, tough to watch autistic kid. And this kid was great. Um, discarnate. Just useless. So, so bad. I, I don't even, I won't even bother telling you about it. It's just so bad. The resort, also, so bad. This one, they go to Hawaii. So you get to see some nice Hawaiian scenery, at least. That's all I can really say for it. It's so bad. And now James is going to talk to you about whatever he wants to talk to you about. And I'm going to eat my salad rolls eventually, but first I'm going to drink my tea. It's not real tea, it's mint. I've been drinking mint 
infusion slightly, which seemed to be working out pretty well for me. Something I'm working on, work in progress. Mm. Indians of South America. How's the blueberry balsamic wrap? It's good. It's good. So this is a National Geographic thing. That makes sense, sense for uh, just the, uh, the map. It's uh, two-sided. The other side is uh, archaeology of South America. James often has to photocopy his stuff big so that he can see it now. Yeah, I had to. I had to expand it. There's no way to. And I didn't, didn't want to be ruining the map either. It's yeah. In color, I would have preferred it. Just find color helps me memorize, but I'm fairly good at memorizing names and, and uh, geographic areas. So, so. Anyway, is it worth paying ten cents for? Well, you can still purchase, but. Uh, I don't recommend getting a National Geographic subscription account. But uh, I've already memorized out, out of the Smithsonian. I guess it's something like an encyclopedia of. Uh, of uh, I, they probably call it Indians. It's put out by the United States. And uh, in, in the United States. And. Uh, I've memorized about uh, 360 ethnic uh, groups or languages. Really, it's a language thing um, in North America, all the way down to uh, the northern part of Mexico, all the way up to the Arctic. It's important to know kind of like whose land you're squatting on. So I say that even though. I'm part indigenous American. Not much. So, um, it's important, uh, you know, my rights to the land are like not a person, a person is pretty well 100% indigenous. Of course, there are more than there are for a lot of folks who struggling around. Left wing, right wing, and can they know what's going on? Anyway, uh, it's almost like if you want to have a little conversation with me, it's kind of required knowledge. Uh, same sort of thing with uh, if people want to get me up about religion, they better do the assigned reading. The assigned reading is a uh, foundational document. Mm. Uh, extra soundtrack. Yeah. All right, is that all you really have to talk about? Uh, I probably have something that annoyed me about the CDC coverage overnight, but I can't think of it right now. So mm. We'll just leave it at that, I think. Okay.